today. In Exodus chapter number 1, or excuse me, 3, I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1, and we're we're going to be dealing uh, for the next few weeks on uh, being a volunteer. Uh, That's what it takes to get the work of God done. Maybe 2016, uh, you will want to become a team member and become a volunteer and to help in the work at Mount Nash Baptist Church in one of the areas uh, that we have need of. And uh, there's plenty of them, and we'd like to get you uh, involved in doing something for the Lord. I want to talk to you today about coming to a volunteer state. And uh, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame and fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and lo, behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thy standeth is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord of thy, God of thy father, the God of Abraham and I, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry, amen, by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land unto a good land and a large a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, the Prerecites and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come before me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. In verse 10, uh, God works for a volunteer. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? And that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token of thee what I, uh, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought w- forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. I want to talk to you this morning about coming to a volunteer state. Now, uh, we feel this is what God wants us to preach, and Uh, That's the only reason I think a preacher should ever preach anything, but I believe that we need a series of messages. I feel in my heart God uh, wants you to become a volunteer. God wants you to become into a volunteer state, a place where that you're willing to serve and to make your life count here at the Mount Nash Baptist. Now, if when I say sometimes if I want you, to, God wants you to come to a volunteer state, then I can hear them people back over here on my right saying, Hallelujah, we're all going to Tennessee. How many have we got here from the state of Tennessee, the great state of Tennessee? One, two, three, four. Come on now, we got more than that. Yeah, all righty, I know. Ralph, I was afraid you were not ashamed of your state over are you? He was about to raise that arm. Both of them up, amen. I, I, and I know when there's somebody say, well, you're talking about the, the state of Tennessee. I'm not talking really about the state of Tennessee, but I like the idea that any state will call themselves a volunteer, don't you? In fact, I'm going to expect more out of Ralph and Jackie, and I see those hands, uh, that came from this volunteer state to be ready to serve here at the Mount Nash Baptist Church and to live up to that name, Volunteer State. In fact, it was 1812 when there was a lot of Tennesseans uh, was willing, I think about several thousand, if I remember the reading that we got off the, uh, I Googled this, amen. Uh, And there was several thousand came and uh, fight in that war against the Mexicans. I mean, there was a big battle going on. And around 3,000 of them came from one state and they've come so many that they started calling Tennessee the volunteer state. Now, it's got a few other names, and I've heard a few Kentuckians call it things I wouldn't want to mention, but 
anyway, uh, that's where he got. And I said, man, I like that. I like the name of volunteer. I like that idea of being a Tennessee and going and being uh, people willing to volunteer. Amen. And so, but I'm not talking, when I'm talking about coming to a volunteer state, I'm not talking about you pulling up and moving anywhere and your physical. I'm talking about you moving somewhere in your spiritual. I'm talking about you've come to a place in your life where you're willing to say, what God's will is, I'm going to be a volunteer. I want to do what God wants me to do. And I appreciate the fact that there is a lot of people who are volunteering today and they're doing the work of God. I believe just as it was that God asked Moses to become a volunteer and get involved in helping the children of Israel get out of Egypt's bondage. God's looking for you today to come to a volunteer state in your own spiritual life where you're willing to obey and serve and do what he's calling you to do. Now it's evident that God all the way down through the time has used volunteers. You read in the Bible and you'll read about people who volunteered to serve the Lord. That's the way it always from Moses all the way down through the New Testament. There was people who was willing to give of themselves to give their time and they volunteered to serve. And the church even today is basically operated on a volunteer basis. Now I know some of you know that we do have two full-time uh, employees, if you'd call them such, and that is a pastor and custodian uh, who does surely a lot of work. And then we have some part-time uh, people. We do have a part-time secretary. We have a uh, token of appreciations given to uh, uh, our, uh, our minister of, of youth, our brother Todd. Uh, but basically, everybody does what they do at Mountain Ash. They do it uh, because they're volunteering to do it. I mean, the deacons don't get anything for what they do. A Sunday school teacher don't get anything for all the work they go through uh, uh, getting together a, a lesson and teaching or calling and working. Uh, a bus worker that gets up way before the time to come uh, and goes out and brings people to the house of God, they're volunteers. Uh, playing the piano here, Jan's a volunteer. Uh, leading their music or choir today, Danny's a volunteer. And, and uh, uh, Juana and, and all those positions that people feel are feel because people believe God wants wants them to do something and they volunteer their time uh, their service and they give to the cause of Christ now this has been going on for a long time God's had people doing that in fact here it is Moses was a volunteer in the work of God uh, you say wonder what is their paycheck well ladies and gentlemen I believe the happiest people in this world is people who are volunteering to do the work of God who's fulfilling God's will for their life. I tell you what your paycheck is here. It's a satisfaction that I'm obeying God. I'm pleasing God. I'm doing what God's called me to do. Now it'll come to you after a while as well because God will reward you. But even now you live with a satisfied life. I'm pleasing God with what I'm doing. I want to tell you that's a great a paycheck in itself. It might surprise you, but according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 64.5 million Americans volunteer each year for an average of 50 hours spread out over a 12-month period. They still, a lot of people volunteering, whether it's in the school to coach or whether it's in maybe uh, this, uh, some of the religious organizations where people do uh, to share, to give. Uh, there's a lot of areas where that's going. Hospitals, there's people volunteering. Uh, I mean, the work of God can never really be done and be done right unless we have people willing to help in the Awana program, help in the youth ministry, help in our bus ministry, help in doing the work that we need right here at Mountain Ash Baptist Church. I applaud those who are volunteers, whether it's in the sound room or wherever it may be, and serving the Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God knows they still got a need. In fact, one day, God looked at Moses in verse number 10. He said, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. God said, You need to get involved. I want you to get involved. 2016 ought to be the year. You say, I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to start going to services. 
business and I'm going to get involved in it and I'm going to do what God wants me to do this coming year. I'm going to vo- become a volunteer in the kingdom of God. Now notice if you would quickly what Moses saw when he came to this volunteer state. Notice first of all in verse number one his amazement. Now Moses kept the flock of of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even Horeb. And verse 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a, a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. I believe that God is going to speak. I believe God is going to talk to your heart this morning. Now Moses had settled down working as a shepherd caring for his sheep. Uh, Sometimes we understand that God is looking for volunteers. And you may find this a little strange, that God is looking for someone to volunteer in his great work, and you look out on a shepherd's field. Well, he might be looking in a secretarial pool. He may be looking in a carpenter or a mechanic or somebody in some office somewhere. Uh, God is looking for people and God's calling them. I do note one thing that when I think about God is he's looking for people to become a volunteer into the great kingdom work. He not one time ever found somebody who was not doing something. Moses was doing shepherd work. If you read the word of God, every person that God ever called, they were busy, they were active, and they were involved. He never got a couch potato to do anything, and he's still not going to. He's always people who's involved in something. And so Moses is active, and Moses is involved. And God reaches down, and God begins to call Moses to become more involved. Now, Moses is up in years. Uh, Moses didn't come to know the Lord until he's 40 years old. It was at that time he recognized the children of Israel was in bondage and he wanted to do something about it. In fact, at the age of 40, he even tried himself to do about delivering them uh, by his own hands. And you remember the story how that he killed one of the Egyptians, got him in big trouble. He ran for his life. Uh, He had a dream of Israel getting out of bondage, uh, but evidently this timing was a little rough. And so he's out here working for his father-in-law. He's tending to his sheep. And 40 years later, now what does that make Moses? It makes him somewhere around 80 years old. I was complaining to myself this day, I was complaining about a backache in my my, uh, leg. And I was thinking, well, bless God, I ought not whimper. Moses was just starting his ministry at 80, and I'm trying to get out of it at 70. Amen. Wait a minute, 60. What am I saying? I mean, I'm 80 years old. He's just now getting into it. I thought, my God, if I'm 80, I hope to God I'm preaching to you young people when I'm 80. Now, you won't be young at that, but I hope I am. Amen. I'd like to stay young if I could, and I don't know how that's going to happen. Probably go to heaven quickly, amen. Uh, But listen, he was involved. At the age of 80, uh, here he is tending the sheep, and God begins to uh, speak to him. Uh, One of the strange things here is that God's called him uh, to do a work. He was in the wilderness. Now, I don't know where Moses dreamed any more about it or not. He had thought about those Hebrews out there in slavery. Surely he had those his brothers out yonder. Uh, But maybe that dream had nearly died out of them being delivered. Or maybe it hadn't. Maybe he had sat around and thought that Israel needs to get out of that bondage. In some way, God needs to get them out. He probably never never thought it would be him. He might not have thought, well, you, you, surely it's not me. I think everybody sitting here would be shocked and amazed if God were to call you this morning to do something big for him. Somebody give me a witness right there. I mean, it shocks some of you. In fact, I, 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 it's amazing to me. Here God is, and he's calling this ordinary shepherd boy, man, out yonder in the wilderness to get ready to do a mighty work for God. But that's the way God operates. God will pick out an ordinary Every day, run of the mill and put his stamp of, of power upon it to do something for him. It's amazing to me uh, that, brethren, he probably thought little thought about nothing, just settled down as a shepherd herder and here God's calling him to become a volunteer to be a, a deliverer. Now, he's a shepherder, but it don't matter to God. Uh, we had J. Harold Smith here 
and his name was Dr. J. Harold Smith. But by the way, uh, Dr. J. Harold Smith, at what doctorate was not in theology. His doctorate was in medicine. He was a literal doctor. Uh, he's often uh, commenting about, you know, I went to all that school and I was being a doctor and here God called me to be a preacher, amen, and an evangelist. But brethren, God calls people. Uh, God calls folks from wherever they are to do something for him. It's amazing, I'm sure. Uh, this week I got a call from Jeff Suffrage. He's a missionary over in Alaska. And he was calling and he was consoling me about my mother and, and, and Sharon. And then I was involved and asking him about his work over there and and I thought to myself, here, old, here Jeff was. Uh, he was like Moses that was out of that desert. He was a, a, a manager in Ison doing work every day, things going well. Had, a, you know, probably a $300,000 home uh, all of his life, which seemed to like all ducks is all in a row. And God called him to go to Alaska and be a missionary. To be honest with you, uh, most a place where people are dying by suicide is in Alaska. When I was over there, I understood it, man. I almost had suicidal thoughts in that depressing place. I thought, dear God, what's he, he's over there doing a mission or work. You know what? Well, I pray for him, amen? But wait a minute. When God calls somebody, brother, God's involved. It'll be all right. But here Moses is. He's on the, in the wilderness, and God calls him to become a volunteer and to go into the service of God. Notice quickly, I want you to see what was seen by him. In verse number 2, the Bible says that Moses saw a burning bush with fire. The bush was burning, but the bush wasn't consumed. Now, it wasn't the fact the bush was burning that got his attention because without a doubt, he saw many bushes burn. Uh, whether it was the heat or lightning or something, it caused them to burn. But the problem here that he saw was, he said, what's amazing about it, while this bush is flaming, it's not consumed. It stays the same. It's nothing going up wrong in it. It's the same way every time he looked at it. And so he went over to check it out and to see what was going on. And so what he saw was amazing. He saw a fire. I don't know, maybe in his mind he thought that continued fire. Maybe it reminded him of the fire of persecution that Israel was a part of. Maybe he thought about that continuous suffering that they were going through. And, and he, he, maybe that was going through his mind before God spoke to him that God wanted him to become a deliverer. That God spoke out of that bush just a common bush, just an ordinary bush. And here, brethren, God calls sometimes just nobodies to do something for the kingdom of God. Now, be honest with you, that bush was a miracle. It was a mason. It was burning. It was not burned. It wasn't consumed because it had God in the presence of God. And God said, I want you to become the deliverer for Israel. And God was looking for someone here to become a volunteer and to step up to the plate and to do a work for him. It was not only what he was seeing, but notice what was said to him. In verse number 4, the Bible says, and when, the Lord, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Wouldn't that be good this morning if God were to call you and you were to just simply say, oh, here I am, God. I'm a young person, but here I am. I'm a middle-aged person, but here I am. I'm an old person, but God, I can still do something. If you're calling me, I know I can do something, and God's calling, and God's still reaching out. I think this is something. It's not only uh, this was an amazing fact that it didn't burn, but it, brethren, that God spoke to Moses was amazing as well. And he told him about this condition of his people, how the oppression and how God said, I heard this and I understand this. And he says in verse number 10, he says, now I'm calling you. I want you. Come now, therefore, and I will send you. I'll send thee unto Pharaoh. He said, there's a problem down here. I've heard about their cry. I've saw their affliction. And he says, I'm going to do something about it. But ladies and gentlemen, please understand me. And there may be devastation all around us, but God's looking for a volunteer to be used of God to make a difference in the lives of young people and families and, or wherever you can make a difference. And God's called Moses, and God's going to call you. And God said, come, and I'll send you. You can become 
a deliverer. God spoke to him to become a volunteer, and he came to a volunteer state in his life where he was willing to do what God wanted him to do. And that's what God's looking for today. God's looking for someone to become a volunteer. People are doing ordinary jobs every day that God is going to call to do a super special uh, brother work for him. And let me say secondly, and I imagine that that ought to be about take care of me. Notice his encouragement. In verse number 11 and 12, uh, Moses a little bit uh, moved by, by, I guess we all would be. And the Bible says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, praise God. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people of Israel uh, out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon this mountain. Now, I, I tell you, I thank God that God is a God of encouragement. How wrong we can be if we think that the lives which God uses has uh, been the lives of men and women uh, who has confidence of their ability. I know uh, you say, well, uh, God needs to call somebody that knows they can do it because I'm preaching to you right now and some of you are saying, you know, I feel like God wants me to do something, but I, I don't th- feel like I'm really capable I don't think I have the ability. I, I don't, don't, don't have the education. Or I, I don't have, I, and folks, I want to tell you that God is looking for people who's not real confident. You think Moses was confident what he was going to do? God's looking for somebody who will volunteer and say, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be available to you. You know what? God wants somebody available to say, here am I, God. Use me. Now, if you think everybody comes to God as somebody that's confident enough to know they can accomplish the task, that's just not true. Because Moses said, I don't feel confident. I, I, I don't know where I can handle it. And God's going to encourage him. I don't think there's anything clearer in all the Bible than the call of Moses was upon him, brother, and he wasn't very confident about what he was doing. And maybe you say, I feel that way. In fact, notice, if you would quickly, the protest he made. And notice in verse 11 and 12, Moses almost protested and said, you know, this thing is too much uh, for somebody like me. I mean, I, I, I'm nobody. You know why I've decided I, I, I'm a nobody? telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And I'll tell you, you can do the same thing. You know that? And Moses protested, who am I? What am I? And, and don't excuse yourself. I'm a young person. God can use young people. Uh, you say, well, I'm an old person. Well, God's using Moses at 80. Uh, God can use you. God wants to use you. What you need to do is be willing to obey and volunteer and say, okay, God but we often protest. We often say, God, why don't you find somebody else? Can't you find somebody else? In fact, I think that's what he was saying over and over. And I, I was reading a little farther along in Exodus 4, 4 and verse number 13, the Bible. And he said, O oh Lord God, I pray thee by, uh, by the hand of him whom thou would send. Uh, you know what he's really saying? God wants you to send somebody else. Uh, God's calling you, and God wants you to be a volunteer. God wants you to do something, and, and you're trying to say, you know what, God, somebody else can do it better, better than me. Well, if God had wanted somebody else, he'd have got somebody else. I think we're all the same way. In fact, I read in the Bible, I read about Jeremiah, and God called Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said, God, you know, I'm just a child. I can't even talk. I thought about Gideon, and Gideon said, God, you want to use me? You want me to be in your service? But he says, what am I? I am the smallest one and the least in the family of Israel. And God said, you're the one I'm looking for, and God's looking for you. I don't think anybody would ever know Billy Carpenter when he was growing up would have ever thought that Billy Carpenter would have been a pastor of a beautiful church like this one right here. In fact, Brother Robert, I think when we grew up, brethren, they thought maybe that I'd be a prisoner but never a preacher. I mean, they thought maybe, you know, that I'd be a failure. Or inv- I mean, somebody that's shy and backward as I was, grew up a, a hick uh, in the country, and the only language I knew was hillbilly. And somebody says, you know, and, and most everybody remembers, so, you know, I just, it's amazing that God would use somebody like Billy Carpenter. And, you know, I'm amazed just as much as you are. 
uh, that God would choose me to become a preacher of the gospel. But by the way, I find it all through the Bible, there was people that didn't feel like they could do it. I don't feel like I could do it. I'm oftentimes, I almost feel like I should resign Mount Nash and go find me a smaller church to preach, more my caliber, you know. I sometimes have all kinds of strange feelings about me, and I think, God, I, am, I, I, I can't do this. I, I, I talk sometimes, and I slaughter the King's English. I've been telling you, you know. And I, I feel sometimes I almost put a protest to the Lord, but God just speaking to you. You need to hear what he's calling you to do. Moses had a protest, but closing, notice his promise. In verse number 12, he said, I know sometimes we won't excuse ourselves, maybe get somebody else, maybe we can't. But God promised, he said, certainly I will be with thee. You know what makes all the difference in the world? It's knowing that whatever you're doing, you're not doing it because that's what you want to do. It's not a fleshly thing. You're not doing it because you're trying to build a name for yourself or you're trying to, you're trying to make money or trying to accomplish something, but you know you're doing it for God. And God said, Moses, you know what? When you go, I want to tell you one thing. I promise you I'm going to go with you. And you'll not make a step that I'm not with you. And you'll not spend a night, no matter how dark and lonely it may be, and I'm not with you and I'm by you. And whenever you start to do anything that I call you to do, and you might feel so unequipped, God says, you know what, I'm going to equip you. Because God's never called anybody to do anything that he didn't give them the power and the ability to do. And God said, Moses, I, I'll be there. I'll be there. And every way you turn, you'll find I'm with you. And I'll strengthen. And I'll be your voice. I'll be your power. I'll be what you need. And I said, praise God, folks. God wants you to be a volunteer. You can excuse yourself if you want to, but God wants you. You say, Brother Billy, you think I could be a deacon at the Mount Nash Baptist Church? I think, I think you could if that was what God's calling you to be. You say, Brother Billy, you think I could help in, in the sound room at Mount Nash Baptist Church? Bless God, if God's calling you, you can. Can I be a Sunday school teacher at Mount? Yes, yes, you can. And we're going to be needing some right here. You, you can. You've got to be willing to say, I'm going to become a volunteer. And quit excusing yourself and saying, you know, I, 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 I don't have the ability. I, I told you many, many times, old J.R. Hill was a deacon here. And I don't know how many times he'd, he'd look up at me and would go on visitation. He'd say, I'm sorry, Billy. I said, yeah, what are you sorry about? He said, I'm sorry that I can't talk better to people. I'm sorry that I don't have I, no education. I can't. I said, J.R., I said, you you got more than most people that Mount Nash has. you got a willing heart to do for God what you can, and God will fix up the rest of it. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'll tell you, sometimes the Holy Ghost comes around on some of these folks that may not have what everybody else has, but God makes up the difference with his presence when they show up in visiting or show up in their teaching or preaching when you can sense God's around. And God says, I'll be with you. Don't excuse yourself. Don't say I can't. You ought to say, you know what? I feel that's what God wants me to do. That's what I'm going to do. You need to be willing to say, like Moses, okay, God, if that's what you want. That's what I'll do. Let's stand with our heads bowed and God speaking today. A series of messages on being a volunteer to this morning, coming to a volunteer state. I like the idea that people will come to a state where they say, I'm willing to become a volunteer. I'm willing to help in the kingdom of God. I'm willing, and not excuse yourself or look around and say, God, sit, get them, get somebody else. No, God's calling you. And maybe right now the Holy Ghost is laying on you about being a deacon in Mount Nash. Maybe God's laying on you to be a bus worker at Mount Nash. Maybe God's working on you to be a wanna helper at Mount Nash, teaching children, or a Sunday school teacher. Uh, God's calling you to help in the secretary or help office work, and we can use you. Or God's calling you to help in the sound room, and we can, we can use you. Or God's calling you to be a cure worker or a uh, 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 outreach or, or God's going to lay it on you and God's calling you 2016 is this is the first Sunday to be a good Sunday to come and say God I've not been doing what you've called me to do and I know I'm not but this today I'm going to put my heart 
in your hands and my life in your hands for your service. Our Father in heaven, 